Hello and welcome to another Magic the Gathering video. So this is the fourth of five unboxings of the Commander 2013 product. This is the Power Hungry Commander deck and uh, this particular colour shard, if we you know, if we base it on the Shards of Alara shard naming, is the Jun. So it's the black, red, green, where red is considered to be the primary colour in that particular shard and black and green are the secondary although in the commander decks i don't know whether that has any special significance um, if you go back to my evasive maneuvers video if you've not already watched that uh, the first commander product i unboxed of this batch that explains a little bit more about the difference between shards and wedges and uh, color combinations within um, you know how they're used on, on the generals and things like that. So this one has the, the red colour down the side because they each have a, a different colour down the side. So let's open this up, same as with the others, 100 card deck, three oversized cards, um, a box to put everything in, and a couple of guides, one for the deck and one just a general learn to play. So first of all, we'll look at the uh, this oversized one, just so you can see. Okay, so you always get three oversized cards here. Let's just zoom into this. And I'll go through in more detail the cards actually when I get to the deck itself. So these just are substitutes for your commanders if you want to use oversized cards for that. Or well, they're in the command zone um, or out um, in play. So we've got Prosh Sky Raider of Kerr. So that's our sort of you know first choice general. But also as alternatives in the same colour combination, not surprisingly. We've got uh, Skek Car Deathkeeper and Shattergang Brothers. So that just gives you a choice if you get fed up playing the main general, you can substitute the main commander. Uh, you can substitute that out. Let's put the standard play to how to play to one side. I'm just going to take it again a look at the, the insert here for the actual deck itself. Um, let me just zoom out. So we have our deck listing with the costs and the type. And a bit about playing the deck. So yeah, basically what they're saying here, don't hesitate to summon Prosh early and often. If he's killed, he'll return to the battlefield next turn, next time with an even larger army of kobolds. Many of your creatures are expendable fuel to stoke the fires of Prosh's rage and none are so expendable as Prosh's favourite meal, kobolds. Uh, keep in mind the commander damage rule. If your commander deals 21 or more combat damage to a player in the course of a game, that player loses regardless of his or her life total. Destroy all threats to your dominion as you grind out advantage by sacrificing your token creatures to destroy large creatures controlled by your opponents. You can also play politics, saving one player from an attack by another. Let opponents think you're on their side and then betray them to their ruin when you have sufficient resources. With a dragon of precious magnitude, you have a late game threat second to none. And then on the other side, we have a little bit of a backstory here concerning the uh, certain commanders and then there's a general how to play commander itself okay so let's open up the deck as with the other ones what I what I tend to do is obviously just show you all the cards but um, just focus on on the rares in here um, and just see what they do. So 
could look also at just the basic land balance. So yeah, six swamps, seven mountains, seven forests, but again, an awful lot of non-basic land in here for color fixing and manner fixing in the, the relevant uh, color combinations for this particular deck. So we've got Prosh Sky Raider of Kerr, three black, right, black, <laughs> black, red, green, that should be five, five. It's a mythic. It's got flying. When you cast Prosh Sky Raider of Kerr, put X a zero one red goblin kobold creature tokens named Kobold of Kerr keep onto the battlefield, where X is the amount of mana spent to sacrifice Prosh. Sacrifice another creature, Prosh gets plus one plus zero until end of turn. Viscera Seer, Elvish Sky Sweeper, White of Precinct Six. Jade Mage, Sakura Tribe Elder, Golgari Guild Mage, Ophiomancer, so this is a rare, it's a 2-2 two -two for two colourless and a black, creature human shaman. At the beginning of each upkeep, if you control no snakes, put a 1-1 one -one black snake creature token with death touch onto the battlefield. Quagmire Druid, Goblin Sharpshooter, another rare. Two and a red for a 1-1. One, one. Creature Goblin. Goblin Sharpshooter doesn't untap during your untap step. Whenever a creature dies, untap Goblin Sharpshooter. You can tap it. Goblin Sharpshooter deals one damage to target creature or player. Endless Cockroaches are also in the deck. One and two black for a 1-1. One, one. Creature Insect. When Endless Cockroaches dies, return it to its owner's hand. Stronghold Assassin. One and two black for two one. Creature zombie assassin. You can tap it as well and sacrifice a creature. Destroy target non-black creature. How to how to honored physician. One and two green for a one two legendary creature human. Tap put target creature card from your graveyard on top of your library. Activate this ability only during your turn before attackers are declared. Scarland Thrynax. Sprouting Thrynax. Terror Ravager. Brooding Saurian. I think that is. Um, two and two green. Four, four creature lizard. At the beginning of each end step, each player gains control of all non-token permanents he or she owns. Haunted Troll, two and two green for an eight four. When Haunted Troll enters the battlefield, target opponent puts four one one blue fairy creature tokens with flying onto the battlefield. And for a cost of green, you can regenerate Haunted Troll. Shattergang Brothers, as a mythic. Uh, one black, red, green. So this is one of our alternative um, commanders. Legendary creature, goblin, artificer. So all of the different colours are featured uh, within the abilities here. So for two and a black, we can sacrifice a creature. Sorry, for two and a black and sacrifice a creature. Each other player sacrifices a creature. For two and a red and sacrificing an artifact. Each other player sacrifices an artifact. And for two in a green, sacrifice an enchantment. Each other player sacrifices an enchantment. Endric Sar Master Breeder. Four and a black gives us a 2 2 legendary creature human wizard with abilities. Whenever you cast a creature spell, put X 1 1 black. Thrall creature tokens onto the battlefield where X is the spell converted, the spells converted mana cost. When you control seven or more thralls, sacrifice Endric Sar Master Breeder. Hooded Horror. Silk Lash Spider, another rare. So again, we've got a, an awful lot of rares in, in these decks. A three and two red for a two seven with reach. <coughs> Uh, X colorless, two green, Silk Lash Spider deals X damage to each creature with flying. Sekar Deathkeeper, 
Two black, red, green. Legendary creature, orc, shaman, four, three. Whenever another non-token creature you control dies, put a three, one, black and red, graveborn creature token with haste onto the battlefield. Capricious Afreet. Four and two red for a six, four creature Afreet. At the beginning of your upkeep, choose target non-land permanent you control and up to two target non-land permanents you don't control. Destroy one of them at random. Inferno Titans, the mythic. Four and two red for a six, six. For red, one red, you Inferno Titan, Inferno Titan gets plus one, plus zero until end of turn. Whenever Inferno Titan enters the battlefield or attacks, it deals three damage, divided as you choose among one, two, or three target creatures and or players. Deathbringer Thokta, another rare. Uh, four black red for three, three. Whenever another creature dies, you may put a one, one counter on Deathbringer Thokta. Remove a one, one counter from Deathbringer Thokta. Deathbringer Thokta deals one damage to target creature or player. Deepfire Elemental. Fell Shepherd, another rare. Five and two black for an eight, six. Creature Avatar, whenever Fell Shepherd deals damage, deals combat damage to a player, you may return to your hand all creature cards that were put onto the battle f your, on th you may return to your hand all creature cards that were put into your graveyard from the battlefield this turn. And for black, sacrifice another creature, target creature gets minus two, minus two until end of turn. Stalking Vengeance, another rare uh, five and two red for a five five with haste whenever another creature you control dies it deals damage equal to its p to its power to target player carl horde worm or charnel horde worm four black red green for six six creature worm trample whenever Charnel Horde Worm deals damage to an opponent. You may return target creature from your graveyard to your hand. Walker of the Grove. Soul Ring. Is, is, and, well, it's in all the decks, actually. Armor and a Sphere. Carnage Altar. So moving on to artifacts now. Swiftfoot Boots. Jar of Eyeballs is in this deck. So three colourless. Uh, whenever a creature you control dies, put two eyeball counters on jar of eyeballs. Pay three colourless tap, remove all eyeball counters from jar of eyeballs. Look at the top X cards of your library where X is the number of eyeball counters removed this way. Put one of them on into your hand and the rest on the bottom of your library in any order. Obelisk of Jund. So some artifacts now that are going to help fix stuff. Um, so we tap, add black, red or green to your mana pool. That's three colourless to cast. Plague Boiler um, is three colourless to cast. It's a rare. At the beginning of your upkeep, put a plague counter on Plague Boiler. Pay uh, one colourless black green, put a plague counter on Plague Boiler or remove a Plague Counter from it. When Plague Boiler has three or more Plague Counters on it, sacrifice it. If you do, destroy all non-land permanents. Spine of Ishshar, -sha seven colorless artifact. When the Spine of Ishshar enters the battlefield, destroy target permanent. When Spine of Ishshar is put into a graveyard from the battlefield, return Spine of Ishshar to its owner's hand. Goblin Bombardment, Night Soil, Curse of Shallow Graves, Curse of Chaos, Widespread Panic is a rare, two and a red enchantment. Whenever a spell or ability causes its controller to shuffle his or her library, that player puts a card from his or her hand on top of his or her library. Curse of Predation, Facundity, Furnace Celebration, Tooth and Claw is a three and a red enchantment. Sacrifice two creatures, put a three, one red beast creature token named Carnivore onto the battlefield. Vile Requiem, so I've got a lot of enchantments here. Um, Foster, 
two and two green. Whenever a creature you control dies, you may pay one. If you do, reveal cards from the top of your library until you reveal a creature card. Put that card into your hand and the rest into your graveyard. Primal Vigor, another rare. Uh, five, four and a green. Enchantment, if one or more tokens would be put onto the battlefield, twice that many of those tokens are put onto the battlefield instead. If one or more one, one counters will be placed on a creature, place twice twice that many plus one plus one counters are placed on that creature instead. Blood Rites, Reincarnation. There's a Jun Charm in here. Obviously befitting because of the colour combination of the shard. Restore. We have uh, Rough and Tumble. Dirge of Dread. Spoils of Victory. Mass Mutiny, another rare. Three and two red sorcery. For each opponent gain control of up to up to one target creature that player controls until end of turn. Untap those creatures, they gain haste until end of turn. Sudden Demise, another rare. Uh, X and a red. Choose a colour. Sudden Demise deals X damage to each creature of that chosen colour. Tempt with end Vengeance. X and a red. Sorcery, it's got Tempting Offer. Put X, 1-1 one, one red elemental creature tokens with haste onto the battlefield. Each opponent puts may put X, 1-1 one, one red elemental creature tokens with haste onto the battlefield. For each player who does put X, 1-1 one, one red elemental creature tokens with haste onto the battlefield. And now we move on to our uh, non-basic lands. We've got Arkham Refuge, which enters the battlefield tapped and also... Um, when it enters the battlefield, we gain one life, and we can tap it for black or red. Command Tower. So this one, we can tap it, and we can add to our mana pool one mana of any colour in your commander's colour identity. Evolving Wilds allows us to um, sacrifice it and fetch out a basic land. Uh, basically, any basic land uh, puts it into the battlefield tapped, and then we shuffle our library. Golgari Gilgate is going to fit, help fix for black or green, but it does enter the battlefield tapped. Uh, Golgari Rot Farm enters the battlefield tapped, and when Golgari Rot Farm enters the battlefield, return a land you control to its owner's hand. You can tap and add black, green to mana pool, green, grim backwards, um, taps to add one colourless to mana pool, and for a cost of two colourless, Black green, you can tap it, sacrifice a creature, and draw a card. Gruel Gilgate comes into the battlefield tap, and that taps for red or green. Jund Panorama um, taps for colourless mana, um, but for a cost of one colourless, you can tap it and sacrifice it, and then search down um, either a basic swamp, mountain, or forest card. And put that into the battlefield tapped. And obviously shuffle your library because you've uh, searched through your library. Uh, Kazunda Refuge, another end of the battlefield tapped land. And again, with this one, you get one life. And it taps for red or green. Um, Kaluni Garden, so this enters the battlefield tapped. You can tap it for green mana. But also, when it enters the battlefield, um, you get to put a 0-1 green plant creature token onto the battlefield. And there were a number of uh, cards like this from, I think it was Zendikar block. I can't remember which particular set in the block, which had uh, an enter the battlefield ability on them. Came to play tapped and tapped for colour, but also had that ability, or had an, a, a specific ability for the colour. Uh, Kerkeep, so this is, a, this is a rare legendary land. Tap, add one colourless to your mana pool. For one and a red, tap it, put a zero one red cobbled creature token named Cobbles of Kerkeep onto the battlefield. So this is obviously going to interact with your, uh, your prosh. Lanoir Reborn, enter the battlefield, tap, tap for green. 
and it's got graft on it. So graft one, this land enters the battlefield with a plus one plus one counter on it. Whenever a creature enters the battlefield, you may move a plus one plus one counter from this land onto it. Opal Palace taps for one colourless, but for a cost of one colourless, you can tap it. Add to your mana pool one mana of any colour in your commander's colour identity. If you spend this mana to cast your commander, it enters the battlefield with a number of 1-1 one, one counters on it, equal to the number of times it's been cast from the command zone this game. Rakdos Skillgate, another enters the battlefield tapped uh, non-basic land, but uh, it taps for black or red. Rapture Spire enters the battlefield tapped. Um, also, if you don't pay one colourless, uh, you have to sacrifice it, but you tap it and it adds one mana of any colour to your mana pool. Savage Lands taps for black, red, green, but again enters the battlefield tapped. Temple of the False God, you can tap it and add two colourless to your mana pool, um, but you can only activate this ability only if you control five or more lands. Terramorphic Expanse, uh, basically just a, a different version or a, what would you call it, functional reprint of um, Evolving Wilds, although obviously Evol I think Evolving Wilds actually did come after this, so Evolving Wilds is a functional reprint of Terramorphic Expanse. But the good thing with functional reprints, although the card does the same because it has a different name, you you know you can have uh, have it in in the same deck together because in Commander the idea is that you only have one copy of each apart from your basic lands. And like um, Evolving Wilds, you tap tap it, sacrifice it, use it to search and search out a basic land card, put it into the battlefield, tapped, and then shuffle the library. Vivid Grove into the battlefield, tap with two charge counters on it. Tap, add green to mana pool. Remove a charge counter from Vivid Grove. Add one mana of any colour to mana pool. And then we move on to the basic land. So here's our swamps. Pretty much looks like standard core set artwork. Um, then our mountains. And finally, some forests. You go through the artwork there. Okay, so there's our power hungry deck. And um, as I said at the start, our sort of lead general, lead commander, I keep saying general, our lead commander is Prosh Sky Raider of Kerr. Thanks for watching.